everyone, this is Alana, the Mental Ninja. Hiya, hiya. Oop, I'm crooked. And thank you so much for coming to my little piece of the crafting world. I am a 36 year old single lady from um, the middle of Michigan where we are on our second snow day for the kids. Whew, that means I got to sleep in. No waking up at 5 o'clock this morning, even though I was probably up until then because I could never sleep, hence the mental. Um, well, today we are going to be mostly talking about knitting because I really haven't been doing any other crafting. Usually I'll get a little bit in here and there, but all I've been wanting to do is knit, knit, knit. It has been about a month since my last post, so I have a lot of things to show you. So let's just jump into everything. Let's jump into FOs first, or finished objects is what we like to call them, and get out my little book. I made a whole list, and of course, I kept them for everyone to see. Look at it, pile of whips, or pile of FOs. <laughs> okay, so um, I am a kind of person that when I am very, very stressed out, I like go crazy knitting. I do have a, well, I, I do have a, uh, a mental illness that is very, very hard on me, very, very hard on my family, um, for those who I stick close to, and my, my friends. When I say family, I mean also the family that I have created myself. So, um, and I like to do really fast projects that get me very quick gratification. So, um, first, oh, is a crochet project. I finished another one of these little, uh, headbands. I really love these headbands. I made this for my friend Jeannie. Um, it is an easy crochet ear warmer. And, um, all the links and stuff will be down below for these. This was really quick, fast, and easy, and I just got some of the Dollar Tree yarn, the Just Chenille Dollar Tree yarn, and I can get these together in less than an hour, like way less than an hour. I was thinking about making tons of these because I really enjoy them, and look at, I'm wearing mine. Oh, I love it. It's so cute. It doesn't look good on me. I love it. And it's using bulky yarn, but honestly, you can use any size yarn. Um, so I got that done. I did get my rainbow socks done. Um, I love these. I used a butterfly heel from, um, Kay Jones. The butterfly heel from Kay Jones. And, um links down below and then a pico bind off that I found on YouTube and then every time since this was um, color changing color you know stripe self striping that's what I want to say every single time it changed color I would change to a knit one slip one and so it turned out like this it's so cute I love them so much I have worn them a few times they are so warm Mmm, so, so warm. Um, some West Yorkshire spinners and linden wool for, for up here. Um, oh, love them. So that's another pair. I'm going to put these off to the side because I'll wear them. A brioche beanie, which this was my first completed brioche project besides the shawlography portion. Oh, sorry.
sorry, cat jumped on the bed. <laughs> and look at, so this, um, this was the two colored brioche hat, and I found the tutorial, um, by Nitty Cat Knits. The link is down below for all these things. And look at, oh my gosh, oh, I love it so much. So at first... I cast it on a lot more stitches and I got almost all the way done then I realized this is way too big so I tore it all out and I figured since I'm learning something new it's okay for me to work and plus that first the first time I cast it on I got all that done really really fast um but oh I enjoyed it so much and I think it looks so cute I cannot wait to do this with other colors and just learn more about that. So on on the kick of brioche, my friend Cassie from Knit a Cast Creates podcast, amazing person by the way. I love her so much. Um, I was watching her podcast and noticed that she put up her make nine, and the brioche heart hat by Jonathan Towel was on her make nine list for this year well it was on my make line nine list for last year but i never made it because every time i cast it on brioche i would mess up i tried at the beginning of the year cast it on something seven times and i'm not even exaggerating and i kept on having to tear it out well since i found love with the brioche stitch in shellography um, you know, I decided to do that other brioche hat. When I saw that on there, I messaged her and said, hey, we should do that together because I still really, really want that hat. And she's like, yeah. So then I was like, I messaged her and I was like, let's cast on today. And she's like, okay. So I cast it on and I got this hat done within like two days because it was such a fun knit. I did do it in acrylic yarn. Well, you know what? I don't know what the pink is. I can't remember what the pink is. I bought it years ago, but I know that this green is an acrylic yarn. In fact, I made the Irma hat. Oh, love this hat, by the way. I knitted that hat out of it. And I was like, you know, I still have all this green and it. it's one of my favorite greens. I want to make something else out of it. So I made it. Oh, I have, this is my go-to hat lately since I finished it. Um, oh, it's so wonderful. I love the hearts so much. So I want to make another one. But what I want to do is, so let's just use these colors for example. See how it's green here on the, on the brim? Once the brim gets done, I want to switch the colors around so that the main color is the pink. So that the hearts look like it's popping out pink on this side. So that it will be green popping out down here and then pink popping up up here. So I would like switch the colors around. So I want to make another one and do that. I don't know what colors I'll use. I was thinking maybe even pink and black. Or, you know, orange and green would be so good. Those are my two favorite colors. But I love this hat. Um, I definitely suggest making this. So I wouldn't do it as a beginner brioche. Because, like I said, I cast it on a few times and got frustrated. Um, but definitely as a second brioche. I would definitely do it. It would be on my list. Well, it was on my list <laughs> um, to do it. So I I suggest this. If you guys have any trouble with it, I know I'm not the designer or anything, but I am more than willing to help. Like I'll even get on video with you and help you because um, the cast on rows, the cast on row and the setup row are a little bit different than what I've seen in other brioche patterns. I only say that because I've read through a lot of brioche patterns, even though I haven't made them. Um, and me and Cassie even had a conversation about the cast on because that was a little uh, interesting. Let me put this back on because I love it. It's so cute. 
Um, okay. So, but yeah. So that is the brioche heart hat by Jonathan Towel. I did change up the needle sizes on it. Um, I did a three for the brim and then five for the hearts. And I can't remember exactly what it says in the pattern, but it's different in the pattern. All right. So the next things I got done, I got done in four days. I was going to podcast yesterday, but I, um, was having a lot of mental issues and, um, so I just wanted to focus on socks, on, on the socks I was making, um, so that I wasn't jumping all over the place. But anyway, so I finished these socks. These are the V for Valentine socks. Okay, so I picked out this. I didn't look at the the maker or the designer or anything. And, da, 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 and then I was like, okay, well, I have to, you know, write this down from a podcast. And then I look. These are made by, these were designed by Ellie Jones of um the Cra Craft House Magic Podcast. She is one of my favorite podcasters. And I was like, yay! Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. How crazy is that? I didn't even know she did. But anyway, so it's cute little heart motif with the little, with like a little chevron down here. It kind of looks like there's a heart hiding behind another heart. Um, I made these for my friend Jeannie. Um, you know, these are her Valentine's gifts. She, I don't think she'll watch this podcast. Pretty sure she won't. Um, but yeah, these are, she knows about this one, but she doesn't know about the socks. And I have a couple of other things that are in my head to make her, which will go through, um, in whips and in soon cast on. But yeah, so, so that's what five things that I got done since the last time I talked to you guys. So that makes me super duper happy. I am so happy for those. I am so proud of those. And I just am happy. All right. So the next things I want to talk about is whips. And I'm sorry about all the shaking. I have this set up on my bed. That's really the only place I have to podcast. Uh, eventually things will get better when I get my um, new place. But um, for now, this is how it has to be. But I figure it's, it's fun no matter what. Um, anyway, so next things are cast-ons. There's a couple things I have not worked on. And I have not worked on the Jelly Roll Blanket. And I have not worked on my knee-high socks. But those are um, linked down below for anyone who has questions about them. Because um, I'm not going to show them on the podcast since, since I have not worked on them. But let me grab... The few things I have worked on, few, I'm, I'm talking like, like I've hardly worked on anything, but I have worked on quite a lot, to be honest. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to show are the socks that I still have on the needles. Um, these just are a regular pair of vanilla socks. Um, I'm making for my sister's father-in-law. Uh, I did a 20 row cuff, a 70 row leg. I am doing heel flap and gusset on number ones with 72 stitches. Um, I am on the, uh, gusset for this. And then I did cast on the second one because I wanted some plain vanilla. Um, because I was having a lot of trouble mentally. And so plain vanilla, um, really helps when I'm overly stressed or overly stimulated. I rock a lot. Um, so doing vanilla, um, helps. I get to rock and I don't have to worry about it's all about repetition. So I rock and I have to do more than one thing. So I rock and I do the same stitch over and over and over again. That really helps. So that's why I always try to have something vanilla on. 
Um, I'm actually thinking about doing something that Ellie of Craft House Magic did. She, her, sorry, cat keeps jumping on the bed. Um, on, like, in her vlogmas, she talked about how her mom just likes to knit, and so she just gave her mom, like, some fingering weight yarn, and she knit a whole tube. I was actually thinking about taking some of my fingering weight yarn and just knitting a tube. Like, just keep knitting it. And every time, like, I can just throw it in my bag or something if I am having a very stressful day and I can't do anything else, I can just do that. How amazing would that be? So that is, that is really good. Um, but yeah, so I have, I can't remember where I was at on this. I don't think I had the heel or anything. I'm not really focusing on these. I'm picking them up every once in a while. But I am hoping that by the next podcast I will have them done. Only because, I am I mean, I'm not planning on podcasting except for when I feel like it. But at least once a month. So, I don't know. We'll see. Who knows when I'll want to podcast next. But hopefully I'll have these done. I don't like to have socks on the needles for top far too long. Because like I said, those other socks I made, I got done in four days. But honestly, I think this is only my second pair of regular size socks I've ever made. My first pair was the first pair I ever made. That was like 11 years ago. Other than that, I usually do shorty socks. Hmm. But yeah, so... That whip is in my uh, float tote. Um, one of my float tote minis. Isn't this so cute? I think this is my first one I ever made. I love that. I love it so much. It's so cute. Okay, so the next thing I want to show that I'm working on is my uh, throwing it back shawl. Um, designed by Cozy Up Knits. It was their mystery knit along. So if you guys, I mean, all of the clues are out now. And by the way, this is in um, my, um, this is my favorite ball sack bag that my sister made for me. It's my favorite bag. I love it so much and it's so big. Um, when I'm done with this shawl, I'm actually going to be putting a sweater in here next. And we'll talk about that in future knits. Cat is going crazy. She's never usually like this. Okay, anyway, so let me pull out. So this is the first three clues. There are five clues. This is the first three clues. Um, I love it. Um, I haven't worked on this for a little bit, but, but um, I mean, there's more to it since the last time you guys saw it. Oh, it's turning out so nice. I think I'm going to work on some of this today. So this is the first half. Like, I have never seen any shawl set up like how they have this one set up. I mean, my friend Erica, the lopsided crafter, um, she was telling me and my friend Margaret, which is twisted... Sisters... Stitchers, stitches on Instagram. I think it's her name. Um, but she was telling us, you know, once you get to this clue, you're gonna be so surprised. I can't wait until you get to that clue because she was a, she was a test knitter, and she was so right. So here is the beginning of the. Oh, I got a lot farther than what I thought. Uh, the beginning of the fourth clue. And honestly, I love this. So, in this, in this pattern, they gave us, like, tons of coupon codes and, like, free patterns. I'm like, holy crap, girls. You guys are so generous. Um, but I was super happy. Um... But yeah, so this is the beginning of the fourth clue. I got to finish this up because I really want the shawl. Obviously, I really want the shawl because, I mean, 
it, this is turned out so beautiful. So this, like, as, uh, like, the mystery knit along from Stephen West, I was like, I would never actually have picked that out myself. But I'm happy that I did it because I learned so many new things and I just loved it. But this shawl by Cozy Up Knits, I would have definitely picked this for myself to knit. Now, I would have looked at some things and thought, oh, that's going to be a little complicated. Not even knitting per se, but in the, I've already gone through like the fifth clue. I haven't actually watched the video yet for the fifth clue, which I will, and that'll probably like bring some things together. But I would have been like, oh, that's going to be a little complicated, but I can't wait to try it out. But I definitely would have picked it for myself to make eventually. Sorry, I'm cold. I got my heater here. So you hear the little noise. That's my heater. I have to have a heater in this room. It's so cold. Coffee. Peppermint mocha. <laughs> Yummy. All right. So... The next thing I have been working on is actually some stockings from, this is a pattern from the 1950s. It is called the Santa Hanging Stockings Pattern right here. Now I got a message from my local yarn store saying, okay, I got a message from my local yarn store saying that they had someone calling around asking if a knitter can knit stockings. Um, his mother had made stockings for his wife years and years and years ago. And um, his mother no longer, I don't know if she has passed or if she's just older and can't make them. But he was looking for someone to make them. And so she messaged me and was like, you know, could you do this? And so I messaged him and he asked if I would make them for him. So we met up and he bought the yarn and, um, I, I started on the stockings, uh, this weekend. Um, now I could have definitely had a lot more done than this, but I had focused on those pink socks, but... this is what I got done. So it's really interesting construction. It's all done in one, in one false swoop. And then you fold it over and then you seam it. And then let me pull out. He gave me one of his mother's so I can look at it while I'm doing it. I told him he didn't need to, but it's nice that I have, I do have it. Okay. So You'll see here that this, you know, ends up being bricks. Well, I noticed that all this is double knit. Um, and the name is double knit. So I decided I was going to do the same thing because that's pretty smart so that I didn't have all these floats going on in the back. Now I did, this would be farther along even so because I ended up having to pull it back a couple times. I put, um, cause at first I was doing the little lines with floats and then I was like, I, I need to figure out something better. And I looked at the back, I was like, oh, she did this all double knit. And so I tore it back cause I had it all done to here. And so then I tore it back, did this, got down here. Then I realized I was doing all of the color work backwards. I mean, I got to like here. Which isn't bad, but when you're doing, like, three colors, then you're like, <sighs> so then I had to go back again and then turn everything around. Don't ask me how I did that. I did. I'm left-handed, so I was reading things backwards, to be honest. I was reading things backwards. Ugh. But anyway, so yeah, so I mean, this is what my back is looking like. I did some intarsia type stuff there and here I'm carrying things all the way across. So it made it a little bit thick, but I figured that since this is a stocking, I don't really have to worry about that so much because 
people will not be wearing it. I mean, but it's turning out good. Um, I put, um, see, his mom put, like, this Angora yarn. Ugh. But all we found was this number five fluffy yarn. I mean, it's still nice. It's still really, really soft. Um, I might take a little comb and brush it out to make it a little fluffier. But it's turning out very, very nice. Um, I'm going to work on that some today. I'm, like, honestly, I, I'm almost done. I basically have a little bit more of the legs of Santa and then the boots and then I'm down to the heel. I mean, that's that. It's seriously going to be super fast once I get down there, because then it's just back and forth knitting. I was thinking about putting it on straight needles, because I do have these vintage size eight straights. I love these. Um, I gave away all my straight, straight needles, but I kept these because I thought that they were so pretty. Um, and I kind of want to put them, I want to make, I don't know if you guys have seen like this, like wreath, it's like balls of yarn and then like you put like knitting needles in it. I wanted to use that, use these for those. But uh, anyway, so I was thinking about putting this on straight needles, and I was like, no, because I can't fold it up and put it in a little bag like I've been doing. I mean, it's not bad using this. Like, I can stop in the middle of a row if I really want to. I mean, I don't usually do that, but but I can if I if I want to. So that's the nice thing about using circular needles. Alright, and then I have one more thing, which is another gift for my friend Jeannie that I'm working on for Valentine's Day. This is called the Knit a Rabbit. It was by Patton's Australia, and I think it was printed in 2006. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, it's a little bunny and I'll show the picture here. This is what it's going to look like. It's so interesting. I'm you. So this is using the, I think this is the Bernat's velvet yarn. I don't know. My sister, my sister gave it to me because I asked her if she had any more left, but you use a size three needles. Look at how tight that is. I mean, granted, that is smart because eventually, so eventually, you fold it like this, you sew along this side, and here, here's the other half, you sew along this side, and then you put these together, and then you sew here. Like, okay. So this is the body. I got this all done last night. Um, after I got the socks done, I wanted to cast on her net, her second gift. Or technically third gift. Um, so I got that done. And here is part of the head. The head's done in two halves. I'm going to cast on the other side today. Like once podcast is done, I wanna I wanna get at least all the pieces done. My sister has fluff, but she's having trouble finding it. So I'll probably because I have a a breathing thing test tomorrow because I've been having such a hard time breathing lately. Um, like for the past month and a half or so, something like that. So I have a pulmonary test tomorrow in Saginaw. I'm sure everyone's heard of Saginaw, Michigan. <laughs> so I have a pulmonary test there, but I was thinking about going over to Hobby Lobby and grabbing some of their fluff, because usually it's under like three bucks for like a bag of fluff. So I'll grab some of that. 
If, if I don't do that, usually I'll use plastic bags, but I really don't want it to have the crinkly sound, so. And I'll have the money to buy the fluff. To be honest, I'll have the money to buy the fluff. So, that's good. But yeah, and this is on my Piece of You bag, which is a local yarn store. Um, so, those are the four... So what is that? Four, five, six whips I have on the needles. One of them being a long term. Well, I count my knee highs and my jelly roll to be kind of like long term projects. Like honestly, this will probably, uh, all the knitting pieces for this will probably be done today. To be honest. I'm hoping that these four projects, or at least because the stockings, I have to make four of them. And I'm doing something new on the stockings, just to come back to the stockings. I'm doing, sorry, my phone's going off. I'm doing double knitting, which I've never done before. Um, sorry, I'm having trouble breathing. Um, I'm doing double knitting, which I've never done before. So we'll see how that goes. I mean, it's going to go fine. I usually, I, I usually figure things out. I'm a pretty crafty person. And if I don't figure that out, then I will embroider it on. Which, because one of the names has nine letters in it. And so he was like, well, you can put her nickname but he would really rather have the like her whole name. So I was thinking of an, at least embroidering one name on it. I don't I don't know. We'll see what happens. But yeah. So that's that. Um so those are my whips and that brings me to not only acquisitions because I, I did buy two things this week um, <clears throat> yarn or yarny related but it also brings to me to my my like probably be casting on today stuff because there's a couple things I want to cast on today if I can get to it. To, since today's a snow day, honestly, and I had nothing else to do today besides I have knit group at 7 uh, for the Love and Stitches podcast. I am a stitch ambassador for the Love and Stitches uh, podcast um, for her membership, which is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. <laughs> Um, love her. She's amazing. But, um, so I have knit group. But other than that, the only thing I had to do was bring my daughter to and from school because my son is at his dad's. But, like, now I don't have to do that because last night it was canceled because there's been a storm for the last two days. Still storming. Still storming. It's been storming for two days now. Um, but anyway, so... The first thing that I want to show you guys that I am going to be casting on today is from my Make 9. Um, my Make 9 stuff is listed down below. This one is called Joe's Perfect Slipper Socks. Now, I wanted... Um, there's a reason why I'm casting this on today. Number one, I've wanted these slipper socks for a long time. Number two, I wanted to cast on something from my Make 9 because it's all things that I really want to make. Now, I was going to go and buy yarn for my Hocus Pocus sweater, which is listed down below as the Superstitious Pullover. But, um, so... I recently went on the Love & Stitches Discord and was, like, asking people to help me find browns. And someone was like, oh, I have a sweater's quantity worth. Uh, I'll send it to you. And I was like, thank you. So I'm going to wait for that yarn to come in. So while I'm waiting for that yarn to come in, 
I'm going to cast on the Joe's Perfect Slipper Socks. And I am going to use this yarn. So this is from Linden Wool. This is in her Ludo colorway, and this is in her Goblin King colorway. It is all kinds of purples and blacks. And I'm going to hold them double and knit them into this. These are very important colorways to me. This is the first um, hand-dyed yarn, uh, no, second hand-dyed yarn that I ever bought. And the movie Labyrinth, which is where these colorways come from, is my number one favorite movie of all time. I honestly watch it every single day night. It is my sleep move me. It is my comfort movie. When things are really, really bad, um, my, my kids put it on the TV for me. Um, like this is my all time comfort is this movie. I don't remember not knowing this movie. It came out in 1986, um, by Jim Henson uh, David Bowie is in it, and Sarah Connolly. Sarah Connolly. What's her name Sarah in the movie? Jennifer Connolly um, is in it. Now, I have made some socks. I got one here. Sorry, it's it was kind of on my floor because I had worn it, but I wanted to show you guys at least. So, I'm sorry for all the cat hair all over it. So... Um, here it is. I made these socks out of it. Striped socks. Um, and I also used them in the other, in my finished pair of socks. But I want these in something else as well. So I wanted to do the Joe's Perfect Slipper Socks with them. So that is going to be exciting. I'm going to cast those on probably today. Um, I'm, I'm really excited. I already pulled out my needles. I was going to cast them on before I started the podcast, but I was like, you know what? I want to do the podcast first. So another thing I'm planning on casting on today is a beanie hat. So I make these, it's just a pattern. I kind of, I mean, it's just your basic, your basic knit hat pattern. But Natalie's from um, Love and Stitches, Knitting Natty, um, Sweetheart Socks came out on February 1st. And it has all these wonderful motifs in it for the socks. Now, eventually I will be doing those socks because I love them so much and it's color work. But she has this little heart pattern in it. And so I was thinking about making one of these, but put the heart motifs around it in this light pink yarn for my friend Jeannie. Um, this is Blue Skies Fiber Wool Stock Worsted. I you guys saw this in the last in the last one, and um, using this yarn, the press grapes, which is what I'm going to use for this hat for the other color. Oh, I was like, that looks perfect. Um, so I got this from Dragonfly Yarn and Quilting. Um, yeah, Dragonfly Yarn and, Yarn and Quilting. Oh my gosh. I can't remember. Is that the whole name? Dragonfly Quilt Yarn Studio. Dragonfly Quilt Yarn Studio. Um, which is a brand new yarn store that opened up here in Bay City. I've already been there a few times. She's the one who sent me the information for the, for the gentleman who wanted the stockings. Um, I really like her. She has amazing prices. So I went over there and grabbed that yarn. And then I went to the other yarn store, A Piece of You, which I love them too. So we got two really good yarn stores here in Bay City. And so my favorite hat needles broke. Like seriously. 
like, came right off. Um, I found out, though, that they were a Knitter's Pride yarn needles. I didn't know that. I didn't even know where I got them. Um... I only found that out because when I was looking at yarn needles at the yarn store, or hat needles at the yarn store, she pulled them out, pulled out a pair that looked exactly like it. But anyway, so she, she also pulled out these Knitter's Pride, um, the Mindful Collection, some, some interchangeables. Like, I know I have interchangeables, but I like having something specific for for hats. I mean, you know, I won't only use these for hats. But honestly, these were only these cords were only six bucks. I mean the needles were only ten seventy five. And I did see that they had a whole kit. I mean, if I like these I might I might get the whole kit so I can have two kits. But yeah, so I bought these. I might end up having to go back and buy like a size six. So I can have the smaller needles too. But I mean, usually when I make my beanies, I don't change needle sizes. I'm like, there's no reason to change needle sizes. Um, but yeah, so that is, that is my in, inquis, acquisitions, inquisitions, acquisitions and my, and my future knits. Those are the things that I am planning, planning on casting on today. Like, I seriously am going to be casting on the Joe's Perfect Slipper Socks right once we get off of this. Or do I want to finish up the rabbit? Ugh. Uh, I'll have to figure it out once I get off. Maybe I'll cast on these and then into the rabbit, but then a lot of the times when I cast on something new, I like to sit there and focus on it and just get some of it done. But we'll see what happens. I mean, there's been times where I had like 14 things on the needles and then like one week I'll just sit there and like finish up as much stuff as possible. That's actually really fun to me. So like a couple days ago, I only had like three things on the needles and one thing was long term or two things were the long term and then you know I was like no I need more things <laughs> oh. so much fun so much fun but yeah but yeah so those those are what I'm planning on doing it's a lot of, it'll be great so anyway, um, now on to the mental stuff. I've been having the hardest week. Mentally. Just kind of throwing that out there. I haven't been able to sleep for days. And I can't wait to talk to my psychologist and get on some some other meds that I'm, I'm supposed to be taking but we're taking it slow because the last time we were messing with my meds I slept for five days straight and that's not an exaggeration and I just I just can't do that But I really need this medication because things are so hard on me. And so, so much is going on. But I am binging on Golden Girls. So binging on Golden Girls and my knitting is really, really helping. And I'm lucky to have my family and my friends. I really am. But all right, that is the end for today. If you really like this video or if you have any questions, you can message me, you can post down below, or you can email me or 
send me a message in Ravelry even, or you can send me a message on Instagram. I am always open. My information is down below, including my email address. But I want to thank you all for staying through the video, and I hope you have a wonderful and mentally soothing um, time. Bye.